It's a second chance for probationers all across Santa Clara County. With me here on Comunidad del Valle is the Deputy, uh, Deputy Chief of Probation, Karen Fletcher, and Pastor Tony Williams of the Maranatha Christian Center here uh, in Silicon Valley. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, so we, when we talk about, pleasure to meet you, sir. When we talk about second chance, what are we talking about uh, here, Karen? This really is about giving offenders, our clients that we serve on probation, a second chance to be successful in the community, to support themselves and to support their families so that they are staying out of trouble and that they're feeling like they're really committed and can contribute to the community. Uh, how many uh, folks are we talking about here? Let's talk about the numbers, if you will. Uh, is it an overwhelming number of folks who are coming into the probation roles, if you will? So about 18,000 adult offenders are on probation, being serviced by the probation department. Um, a big portion of those, about 4,000 individuals, have come to us recently as a result of Governor Brown's state realignment, mm -hmm. which went into effect in 2011. So about 4,000 of those individuals are now being served in this county, as opposed to being served at the state level through state parole. Well, that's a tough job uh, assigned to you to try to keep them from going back. Uh, into the system. Uh, how is that working? And I know your collaboration with Pastor Tony here has something to do with it. Absolutely. So we've partnered in um, many ways to provide services to these individuals. So they're getting cognitive behavioral treatment in the community, substance abuse, mental health treatment. But one of the big factors that we've have actually proven to be very successful is the faith-based collaborative. The probation department and the faith-based partners have come together to really provide a very unique set of services that really show the collaboration in this county and how successful we can be when we work together. Talk about that collaboration, uh, Pastor Tony. How is that working and is it working? Well, it's working very well mm -hmm. and we've seen a great deal of success and we recognize that there weren't only the felt needs, housing, employment, family reunification and those kinds of things, but there were also some spiritual needs, our inner needs that we call, and we try to address both. We're somewhat the heart of the reentry mm -hmm. effort and the reentry program, and so we continually uh, reach out. We go a little step further. Uh, we'll put our arms around people. We'll uh, speak with them, talk with them, and our ultimate goal, of course, is first to reach out and to rescue because we look at reentry as, as maybe an astronaut coming from outer space. He's been in weightlessness, and all of a sudden he's got to get used to gravity again. And when an individual is released from an institution, uh, they haven't had to pay rent, they haven't had to pay a car note, gas, mm -hmm. any of the responsibilities. Welcome and all of a sudden, you're back and you feel this great weight. And so there has to be a process of reentry, helping them to get acclimated back to the community. And so the first thing we try to do is reach out and rescue. And we work in collaboration with probation to do that. And how many of those want to be rescued? And how many are there to, just to go through the process and make sure that they, they please the judge, if you will? Well, it seems like 100% of those who come to us uh -huh. want to be rescued. And then there's the, pro the long process of restoration finding homes, getting them jobs, uh, anger management, whatever support groups that they may need, drug, alcohol, and those kinds of things, which we also partner with probation about. And then our ultimate goal is the third R, and that's to return them to the community as productive citizens. Mm -hmm. what, what happens, uh, Karen, without the safety net that, that you're providing the probationers who are out there, the 18,000 probationers? So if we don't provide services, these individuals are just in a vicious cycle of going in and out of custody. That was proven with state parole, they had a very high recidivism rate, largely because of the services that weren't able, they weren't able to offer. So these services here really are key to success. I think one of our big accomplishments this year has been the employment fair that happened the end of May. Mm -hmm. That was a strong partnership with our faith-based partners to really to have individuals come forward that are viable candidates for jobs and to have individuals in the faith-based community step up and really give these individuals a second chance knowing what their criminal histories are and still providing them an opportunity for employment which really gives them a, a sense of worth and the ability to contribute and provide for their families. Is it too early to say this is working that we're making a difference in a large amount of the probationers or are we seeing no results now? And we are seeing results now. Um, our recidivism rate is much lower than what it was at the state. Um, time will tell. It's uh, about three years now into the program. We're very happy with the results. There's always room for improvement, but we feel that the efforts that we have made and the services we can provide and the partnerships in the community 
trying to restore some of those relationships for these individuals really is the key to success and it is working. So, so why didn't they seek faith, uh, Pastor Tony, before they got into trouble? Or is it something that uh, uh, wasn't introduced to them and then once they find out what's ahead of them, they say, well, maybe... Well, oftentimes uh, people will drift in and out of mm -hmm. faith. Maybe they went to church as a childhood or to a mosque or wherever as a child and then grew up, drifted away from their faith. Many found faith while they were incarcerated. Uh, and many come to faith. Sometimes people say, you don't really see God till you're flat on your back and you look up. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're in need of a place to stay, when you're in need of clothing, when you're in need of a job, when you're in, uh, feeling all, of, all alone. And those are the three great needs we find now. Employment, that these individuals, we call them partners, are in need of employment. They're in need of permanent housing, a place to stay and to live and they're in need to be reunited with families. And that families comes in a very broad sense because sometimes they burn bridges so much right. they can't get with their natural family, but it could be a support group. It could be the mentors that we put them in contact with. It could be a church group. It could be anyone that is pushing, assisting, lifting, and helping them to move towards uh, more positive choices and decisions in their lives. All right. Uh, any more information that you might want, maybe for a family member or loved one, there is a number and web address for more information. Any final thoughts, Karen, before we let you go? I think this has just been a, a very positive um, interaction, a very positive collaboration. This is really about making people successful. That's going to protect public safety and really contribute to society. Right. Very good. All right. Thank you so much.